couple of RBIs. Makes a called strike. And you know, Linares wanted to do better than anyone on this Florida team because in the previous College World Series, he was one for 14. Really come through today. A pair of hits. Just missed there. One and two. Jones with a little smile on his face. Thought he had that one. Especially after he got in the pitch before. Two and two. Popped off the right side. Brown giving chase, but it's back in the stands. I love the delivery of Bobby Jones. He's just so completely in control of himself. So effortless, very smooth. By being so effortless, he doesn't put a lot of wear and tear on his arm. If you're herky-jerky and you make your body do things that aren't that are not within the limits of what it's supposed to do, you've got much more of a chance to strain yourself and puts a lot more pressure on the muscle. Popped up into shallow right. Judas comes on way in and makes the grab. Last chance for Fresno State due up in the bottom of the ninth. Brown, Falco, and Spearman. Which publication? Of the ninth, Florida leading Fresno State two to one. The winner of this game will play LSU. Two big bats, Lyle Mouton and Gary Himmel. Great story about their bats. Mr. Mouton and LSU was staying at our hotel. Mr. Mouton was telling me that uh, Himmel had come over and borrowed some of the magic oil that Lyle had gotten from a relative in Majorca. And they sent it over and they rub it on their bats before every game. He had two home runs the other day and Lyle had two home runs in the first game. Evidently it works. A little bit of the voodoo from uh, the Major League movie. I was huh? just going to say, sounds like that too. Pritcher is on the Florida closer. 5'10", 185, a junior out of Orlando. 11 saves. And they say that he's good for about 15 to 20 fastballs, good fastballs a day. So they like to bring him in to just pitch one inning, like Dennis Eckersley does. Figure that if they can get about 20 good fastballs from him, and he's got a decent slider, he's the man that does the job in the late innings. Bonanno did a fine job out of the bullpen. Two innings, gave up only one hit. One hit and all six outs he got with round ball. Grant Brown as Fresno State is down to its last three outs. One for three. Singled last time up in the sixth. Hit hard off the left side, but slicing foul. The wind now seems to have changed direction and is blowing almost straight in. That's when you get the feeling that the baseball gods are against you when you need one run and the wind starts blowing straight into your face in the last inning. Just kicked back a little bit toward left but now back toward center. Fouled off again. Well that's that's two good fastballs. Now what you've done is you've gone from Burke throwing 94 95 to Bonanno who's throwing 84 85 back to the hard thrower Pritcher that's back up into the 90s gives you a little bit different look so that you can't adjust to each individual pitcher by seeing him another time around. Fastball just missed the outside corner one and two. Of course what you'd like to see in this situation is your leadoff hitter get up there and foul a few off. This guy's only got 15 pitches <laughs> in his arm and get rid of him. This one is squibbed to short. Polkovich. Low throw. Nice scoop by Killen and one gone. I imagine in an elimination game, he could probably suck it up for a few more than 15. I would think so. <laughs> one gone in the ninth. The situation is this. Florida leading Fresno State 2-1. to one. The only scoring took place in the sixth inning. The Gators got two in the hat, top half of the sixth. 
Fresno State answered with one. This is Chris Falco with Spearman on deck. Falco 0 for 3. Remember, he's had two home runs so far in the College World Series. His third, if it came right here, would tie this game up. Richard guns another one in there, one and one. The Gators hoping for another shot at LSU, a team they're very familiar with, of course, out of the Southeastern Conference. Right call, one and two. Good pitch. Outstanding location and 91 miles an hour. Don't need anything else, do you? Makes the game easy. Count rides at one and two. Wind now going back to left at about 15 miles an hour. Burke hoping they can hold it for him. Hit towards center field, Duva. That's two. And the number nine hitter, Vernon Spearman, is the only thing that stands between Florida and a rematch with LSU. Spearman 0 for 2 plus a walk. Bob Bennett is trying to win his 894th game as a college baseball coach. One of the legends in college baseball. 23 years on the job. He's been named coach in the conference 20, 11 different times. Runs a great program and one of the spokesmen for college baseball. If Florida wins and goes against LSU, they'll be fighting a, a tough schedule this year. They are 2-5 and five against LSU this season. Spearman hitting 270 coming in. He is 3-for-9 in the College World Series. He's got great speed. And there's a huge gap in right center if he could get it out there. Called strike two. Pritchard trying to shut him down in the ninth. Tap towards short. Polkovich can end it. High, and he's safe. Polkovich, knowing the speed of Spearman, may have hurried that a little bit, threw it high, and Killen had to go up after it. So Fresno State is still alive, and Spearman, with all that speed, is on at first. Polkovich had a trouble with the ground ball earlier in this inning, and with Vernon sprinting down the line with good speed, he's got plenty of time, takes an extra crow hop, it throws him off a little bit. So Mike Noel will come up with Spearman at first. Great speed. It's an error on the shortstop, Kevin Polkovich. Noel 0 for 4. Struck out twice, grounded out twice. You send Spearman. No, I don't. I don't run myself out of the ball game. He's stolen 26, been caught nine times. Noel takes it high, 1-0. No action in the Gator bullpen. It's up to Pritchard. He's the guy that got you there. You don't have to steal. You just want the tying run to second base. Ooh. Joe Arnold wants to find out why. See if we can see the false movement. He caught his spike. His shoe got caught. And that gave it a and that gave it the funny look. Dave Yeast at second base. 
picked up on it right away. I think what happened was he tried to make the quick move and his spike got caught in the dirt and so he wasn't able to step to first to throw. Tough break for Pritchard. But a huge break for Fresno State as they now have a runner in scoring position with outstanding speed in Spearman and Noel with a one ball no strike count. Maybe the heroics aren't over yet. One and one. Fresno State already living on borrowed time. Spearman reached on an error, a throwing error from the shortstop Polkovich. And the Bulldogs have only gone one for nine with runners in scoring position today. Two and one. Spearman represents the tying run at second. Noel at the plate represents the winning run. Last night's ball game, Wichita State Creighton, we saw the game end on a great throw from Jim Audley to home plate. Throw had to be perfect to get the runner, and it was. Two and two went after an outside fastball. Fresno State, one swing away from elimination. Florida, one strike away from a rematch with LSU. On, and Spearman 180 feet away from the plate, which is where he wants to be. He got him swinging. The closer does his job. Pritchard comes in and sets them down in the ninth, stranding the runner at second base. The final score, Florida 2, Fresno State 1 will be back in a moment. With the cool going down with the chill. Score, Florida wins it over Fresno State, 2-7 and 2 for the Gators, Fresno State 1-8 and 0. Oh. Later tonight here on ESPN, you'll see number six seed Long Beach State, the 49ers against the Blue Jays of Creighton, the seventh seed of this tournament right here on ESPN. And then tomorrow, the LSU Tigers against the Florida Gators. LSU has won five of the seven meetings this year. The winning pitcher this afternoon, Burke, nine and five. Bobby Jones, another complete game, but he loses it. His record falls to 16 and two. The big hit was Killen's two-run double that won it for Florida. So long, everybody. 37 in some of the more recent parts built over time. And yet it's got enough leg room uh, that you won't have to have your knees in your neighbor's head. How about the name? I've had all my kids writing in for Brooks Robinson Stadium. Is that any chance? Well, you know, it's, this is a good time to mention huh? it, Brooks, because the reason that we got this thread <laughs> right up at the yeah, top okay. is to put the name of the stadium oh, up there. It looked great up there, wasn't it? Yeah. What it was going to be. I'd settle for Robinson. That'd have to be Brooks. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> Just to be, I'd say. Uh, it's impressive. Uh, it's got everything. Everything you want and more so with a modern ballpark. It's got a, a different twist to it with the dimensions and uh, some of the features you have at the ballpark. And it's uh, just uh, it's going to be really exciting. I can't wait to start playing here next year. comes today's Duracell battery. And here's yesterday's. Today's Duracell batteries are built to last even longer than the ones we made just a few years ago. So you'll be guaranteed a long, happy life. Duracell. You can't top the copper top. Me, Stain Wood? That's a job for professionals. Would you try a stain made for amateurs? Well... Czar would stain. Okay.
Other stains are made for professionals, but Czar Wipe-On Stain makes it easy for first-timers to get beautiful results. And Czar's controlled penetration gives you plenty of time to wipe off excess and avoid streaks and lap marks. It looks great. My wife is going to love this. And for lasting protection, use Czar Clear Finishes. For a free brochure in the dealer nearest you, write us today. This ESPN program is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. Remember, know when to say when. And now, once again, Bill Crabe and Sue Essler in their quest to visit every major and minor league park in the country. Sports tour brings us to Engel Stadium in Chattanooga on a beautiful morning. Tonight's game will feature the Chattanooga Lookouts and the Huntsville Stars at what we are told is the sixth oldest stadium in the country. And it is a beautiful one. Chattanooga, of course, famous for its choo-choo and right through the walls of Engel Stadium, you can see a train. Perfect backdrop for baseball here. The uh, center field wall is quite literally that. It is a cement wall. Chattanooga must lead the league in injured outfielders. This is Smith Will Stadium, Jackson, Mississippi. Rain coming down hard. And folks here in Jackson looking for volunteers to help them get the tarp on the field. One of the problems with getting volunteers to work the tarp is it's hard to figure out anybody who knows what's going on here. Get the this is Ray Wander Field in Little Rock, Arkansas, the home of the Arkansas Travelers. First things you notice at Ray Winder Field in Little Rock, Arkansas, is how big the screen fence out behind the outfield is. The reason for that is there's a freeway right on the other side of it. And the uh, Arkansas Travelers General Manager Bill Valentine is telling us today that uh, once in a while, about five times a year, he says, the balls go right over this fence and out into the freeway. VJ Keith Field in San Antonio, Texas the home of the Texas League San Antonio Missions. Los Angeles Dodgers AA affiliate. Gary or fence signs we've seen so far. I wouldn't want to line up in center field next to one of these guys. Yikes. The uh, infamous fire ants of San Antonio, apparently. The roasted stand concession stand in Keith Field in San Antonio is the first of its kind we've seen. It's pretty good. Roasted corn. Somehow it never turns out that well on my own barbecue. This is a look at the uh, manual scoreboard here. Mike, would you like the job? It uh, seems like it's pretty fun. We get to watch the games and stuff. What do you uh, What do you like best about it? When the home runs come over. <laughs> so must have to uh, keep pretty close track of what's going on out there, so you don't miss something, huh? Yeah. Do they ever get on you, the fans? Yes. They, yes. That yeah happened uh, about two days ago. I mean, I had the score messed up. I had an extra run on the other team. Uh, ah. Yeah. Yeah, they were getting on you, huh? Yeah. Now, this is one of the more unusual races we've seen so far. There's the Paco out here. There's a little girl. She's catching up. And uh, we're told that not only does the Paco run, but uh, he occasionally gets tackled. Upper Deck Stat of the Week. Nobody does baseball like Upper Deck. Our Stat of the Week stems from the Texas Rangers' recent 14-game winning streak when the Big Bats were booming. Drilled down the right field line, fair ball into the corner. 9-4 Texas on a triple for Ruben Sierra. That is 
this to right field. That's going to be in for a base hit. Sierra scores right behind him as Franco and the Rangers take a 6-4 lead. And he hits one here to deep left field. Cotto goes back, and this ball is gone. A three-run home run for Steve Bouchelle, and the Rangers continue to pound the baseball. On May 24th, Hal McRae took over as manager of the Kansas City Royals and got to manage his son, Brian McRae, who that very night made Dad proud. Loop to shallow center field. McRae was playing very deep and makes a sensational running catch. When this ball left the bat, I didn't think there was a chance in the world that Brian would be able to make this catch. And Dad will be impressed with that catch. He could only hope he could have played the outfield that well. But Brian wasn't done. For in Hal's second night as manager, he went one step further. Drives this one to left center field. A diving catch by Brian McRae. He just keeps doing it. Tell you, Danny, I'm getting to the point where anything he does in center field, it won't surprise me. We see catches like this almost every night. Maybe every team should have a dad as manager. For in Hal's third night as the skipper, Brian did it with the bat. Forget it. Way back. Off the facing of the auxiliary press box out there. That was a rocket. Brian McRae belts his fourth home run of the year, and that'll make any father proud. But believe it or not, this story's not over. For in Brian's fourth night with his dad, he outdid himself. Absolutely, one one from Apier. Well, the center field chasing Brian McRae back, way back, leaps and makes the catch. Add another cut to the Brian McRae highlight film. May have gotten the wind knocked out of him a little bit there. He was fully extended to make this headlong dive. And you're right, Denny, it, it happens every day. Upper deck. Nobody does baseball like Upper Deck. Find one of 2,500 personally signed Nolan Ryan cards hidden in random packs. Shine a light on you, shine a light on me. Keep your butt light shining for everyone to see. Shine a light on this, shine a light on that. Oh, shining all the other days with Bud Light. That. When you're looking good, you want Bud Light. The clean, fresh taste won't fill you up and never let you down. You can take it, you can feel it. You know you got it right. Everything else is just the light to keep your voice. Now, when you buy any size of Roundup or Green Sweep, you can get over 200 bucks worth of coupons on all sorts of things to do in your spare time. The book's free when you buy either Roundup or Green Sweep. So pick up a bottle. Or two. <coughs> yeah, right. Day. It's like staring down the barrel of a loaded cannon when you face the blazing fastball of Boston's Roger Clemens. He fires away against the hard-hitting athletics, live on ESPN's Friday Night Baseball. On deck for next week, the King of New England, as we present... The Ted Williams Story. 
so they can never write ever again that I was hard-headed. And never write again that I never tipped my hat to the crowd. <laughs> because today, I tip my hat to all the people in New England. This is Warner Fusell. Promotional considerations furnished by United Airlines, together with United Express, serving over 200 cities in the U.S. and around the world. Come fly the friendly sky. And by Major League Baseball home videos. Call 1-800-328-8500 to order your copy of Major League Baseball's greatest play. to the College World Series could be summed up by one word, power. The men in purple have been led by Creole country's Lyle Mouton. He's had some help from fellow Louisianians like Pat Garrity of Chalmette and Baton Rouge's Gary Hemel, whose home runs have given him an all-time single season record of 23. Yes, these home runs have been the kind that kids come to Omaha dreaming about. Tonight, the reality is the dream is but one game away. But blocking the Tigers' trail to a title is SEC rival Florida that counter power for power with pitching. Already, freshman Mark Valdez has thrown a gem. His against top-seeded Florida State. He sent them home. John Burke, the tall right-hander, responded yesterday, bringing heat to Fresno State. And closer John Pritchard's confidence was bolstered by a saving night. Power versus power as SEC rivals meet at the 1991 College World Series. The ticket reads, Game 11, Day 6 at Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha, Nebraska. The records keep falling. They've been shattered here at the College World Series. And the SEC rivals meet for the eighth time this season, it is LSU against Florida. Now, here's the final four in the Western Division. It is Wichita State and Creighton that will play in an elimination game for Creighton tomorrow night. They will have to beat Wichita State twice to move into the championship game. The same holds true for the Florida Gators. It's a double elimination format. As long as we stay in these divisions, it becomes a single elimination format in the championship game on Saturday. Hello, everyone. I am Tim Brando. Well, you, you've heard the story, I'm sure, the saying, familiarity breeds contempt. Well, that's what we have for you tonight, as for the second time in the College World Series, the Tigers meet the Gators. Game one, eight to one. Lyle Mouton with those two big home runs that I'm sure Gator fans will not soon forget. And, of course, the fans down in Baton Rouge and the rest of the state of Louisiana will not forget either. Speaking of that ball game, two coaches that know a great deal about one another will comment on that game and the game that's about to take place tonight. They are down with Steve McCaddy. I'm talking about Skip Bertman and Joe Arnold. Joe, you've faced Skip's team six times this year, but this is getting a little ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, it is getting ridiculous. He knows my guys better than I do, and uh, I tell you, I'm getting tired of looking over in that dugout, the same old faces all the time, but it's going to be a well of a ball game tonight, and I hope we're up to the task. Skip, during the SEC tournament, you kind of recommended the place for their team to stay down here. Where's it at? <laughs> I didn't know he'd be in our bracket, though, and I'd be having coffee every morning with the same guys. Uh, I'm proud of Joe. I'm proud of the SEC. Uh, it's a great conference, and Joe's done a tremendous job. It's a shame we're in the same bracket this time. And uh, in the future, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Joe and some other Southeastern Conference teams aren't in the title. Joe, you lost the opening night game to the Tigers. What adjustments are you going to make tonight? Well, I think the newness of the tournament has worn off. Our guys were just quiet over here, uh, scared, really. And uh, we've had a couple games under our belts now, and, and I hope to play a little different ball game, a little more aggressive. And I hope this wind shifts a little bit and blows straight in about 20.